Well, now, the referendum campaign isn't just making headlines in Britain. African nations are watching the polls closely, with the UK one of the leading European destinations for African capital and labour, of course. Our guest today focuses on uh, European Union policy from uh, the African political and uh, business perspective in Brussels. Uzu Madu is uh, normally based in Brussels, but joins us today in our London studio. Welcome to you. Hello. My first question would be, let's get on to the, the EU in a couple of minutes, but okay. uh, <clears throat> this whole idea, the whole perception of uh, Africa being the new frontier, right. uh, as has been put forward over the past couple of years or so, is it still the case that Africa is seen as the new frontier, or, or has the shine gone off it somewhat? Well, I think there is definitely still a shine and it is still seen as a new frontier in political terms. Um, I think the European and African relationship is somewhat unequal um, and now we see them moving towards equality in the relationship because they understand that it is the new frontier and investments going there and competitive mm. investments from China um, make it very real that it is the new frontier. So what we're seeing just now in the likes of uh, not only Nigeria, for yeah. instance, but uh, South Africa as well, could this be seen as an inverted commas blip as opposed to a long-term problem uh, with the economies? Well, I think one thing that happened uh, a few years ago when the Africa Rising narrative was very popular is that um, actually the focus was on a lot of exploration and findings of commodities and minerals. Mm. So um, we didn't really have any growth in the production and manufacturing sector. And I think now they are diversifying and trying to put in place those plans. Bihari, um, with his new administration, has said that that is going to be a focus mm. of diversing, diversifying the economy. Um, and I think along with that and regional integration measures, Yes, definitely. What about uh, the whole uh, Brexit debate? I mean, I I is it how much uh, of an interest is there uh, in, uh, in the African continent? I mean, uh, Anglophone countries, obviously, uh, are they for or against Britain staying in the EU? What benefits would it bring either way? Well, I think a lot of the debate in the African context has been from Britons in um, in the UK, Britons or Britons of African origin, mm. and so the main argument is actually the common agricultural policy coming from the EU because they subsidise EU farmers and they implement tariff barriers which are not competitive for African farmers wanting to sell their products on the EU market. But one thing we have to consider is if the UK does leave, the CAP will still be in place mm. and actually the UK will be under competitive pressure to keep those subsidies in place and even increase them because they will now be in direct competition with the European Union. Mm. So I think that there is also a bit of a discourse between uh, the Africans living in Britain and mm. the Africans living in the continent mm. and I really want to see more of Africans living on the continent mm. involved in this debate. You've also been looking at uh, these uh, proposed EU anti-tax uh, avoidance measures. How will this impact on countries like Nigeria and South Africa uh, again? I mean, there's a lot of illicit cash uh, being moved around by some corrupt individuals. I mean, a phenomenal sum, really, one trillion dollars. Is, is that over a period of several years? Or? Uh, yes, it's over yeah. a period of seven years. Um, so that's going to be clamped down upon? We, we hope so. Uh, the figures at the moment coming from the UN high level panel on illicit flows uh, from Africa marks out about 16 billion euros a year and Macky Sall, the Senegalese president, has been up in arms and talking to European leaders about the tax avoidance issue. Mm. And now we have proposals on the table from the EU. Wealth of measures including um, supporting African administrations with tax matters, which is very important because actually only three African countries mm. actually have the facilities to deal with the most common forms of tax avoidance. But there's also measures to look at how foreign income can be taxed when it gets to Europe, mm. which is really important. Um, and also transparency measures so that we can see the financial data of some of these companies, which we know is a very big problem, especially in the extractive industry sector. Okay, Uzo Badu, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Mm.